Hey guys, so recently I was working on a client website project that is very content heavy and it required me to create some category archive pages. Uh, so today I want to show you exactly how to do that in Generate Press Premium using Generate Blocks. All right, so here on my starter site, I have a blog page set up with a bunch of dummy blog posts. So this is a query loop. If we dive into the back end, I'll show you real quick. This is set up as a generate blocks query loop um, to essentially just pull in the latest posts um, to create my blog page. And at the top here is my categories. So I've got some fake ones set up for medical, for cooking, and for technology. And so when we click through to one of these categories, right, because they are set up so that the dynamic data is listed as the list of terms to categories and the link source is to the term archives. So if we select medical, we're going to view all medical posts. But as you can see out of the box, this looks terrible. <laughs> Um, we definitely don't want this to look this way because if somebody was to land on that category archive page or wanted to view more uh, medical articles, we want that to look good, um, just like our blog page here. So I'm going to walk you through now how to set up and create your category archive pages so they look much better than the default. All right, so first we're going to dive into our elements. So we're going to go ahead and go to elements. Uh, in our back end, it's under Appearance Elements. And again, this is a Generate Press Premium feature. If you go to Generate Press, under Modules, make sure that you have Elements active. All right, so we're going to go ahead and say New Element, and we're going to choose Block, and hit Create. We'll go ahead and title this Category Archive. And first on this right hand side, we need to choose the element type. Now, because we're essentially creating another query loop and looping content from category, uh, we're going to create and choose the loop template option under element type. And now we can start building. So first we'll go ahead and insert a container with the inner container. On my outer block, I'll go ahead. I've got some preset global styles. I'll do medium size container. And then we'll go ahead and insert a query loop. Now on the query loop, we can choose um, two columns. I'm going to go ahead and do something very similar to what I have here on the blog page just for design consistency. So we can get rid of the excerpts. Go ahead and delete that. Open up my side panel here so you can see what we're working with. And on the grid, uh, excuse me, post template, I want these to be 33% width so that they are three uh, posts to a column here in a row. And if we jump back over now, um, we need to add a block here for our category. Um, much like we have on this main blog page, right? Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the post date one and scroll down to dynamic data and choose list of terms, say category and link. Uh, we actually were going to leave off the link because since we're already going to be on the category archive page itself, um, we don't want to created a link to its own page already. So we're going to go ahead and leave that one off. Now we can go ahead and style this category headline block. Um, we'll do a dark orange here. We'll do font weight about 600, transform uppercase, uh, letter spacing about 2 EMs, 0.2 EMs, excuse me. And then spacing, oh, missed it. Spacing on the bottom, we're just going to do about six pixels of bottom margin. And then on the date here, um, we actually want this to stick to the bottom of the card. But what we need to do first is a couple things. 
Um, we're going to display flex on the post template container. Choose column. And then under sizing height, we're going to put 100%. And so now on the last headline block that contains the date, we're going to go to spacing and on top margin, put auto. So now you can see all the dates are automatically put towards the bottom. Um, and I will actually add about 12 pixels of top padding on that date just so that there's a little bit of separation between the headline and the date below it. Um, now I have a little helper class for CSS uh, that removes the underline on a link if I don't want it. So that's node-ul. So next is we need to go ahead and choose the location. So we go under location and we start to scroll down. We're going to go under post archives and say post category archive. And we want this for all categories. Now the final piece to this puzzle is one of the most important. If we come to our query loop block here, we need to toggle on this first option to inherit the query from the template. So because we are utilizing the category archive template, we want it to automatically inherit that query so that it'll pull in the same category that we're already calling to. So we're gonna turn that on and we can go ahead and now hit publish. So if we come back to our blog page and let's go ahead and click medical. And there you have it. So now our medical category page, so if you see in the URL here, category slash medical, um, definitely looks a lot better. Um, but of course we're missing a head, headline here. So we can come back to our element uh, for our category archive and add in a dynamic headline. So we'll push this back up to the top, put in an H1 dynamic data and we'll choose list of terms once again so this is going to pull in the current list of term uh, from this category archive page so if we go ahead and hit save then revisit our blog page here click on our category cooking and now you'll see we've got our h1 for cooking and all of the posts under that cooking category uh, we can go back and take a look at another one if we click medical again there's our h1 and all five medical posts now if you have a lot of posts on your uh, website and you need uh, pagination in order to show more posts um, well first there's two parts to this by default because we're inheriting the query form template um, from the template, excuse me, this is actually the number of posts is showing on these category archives is brought in by the general WordPress settings. So if we go to setting and we say reading, blog pages show at most 10 posts. So if we said 50 posts, so cooking is the one that we come to, and this now has three, six, nine, 12 of them showing. Before it only showed at most 10. Um, so it stopped here on the last one. So if you're trying to list more posts on your archive pages, uh, you'll need to update this setting under settings reading on your WordPress dashboard. And then if you have, say, more than 50 posts, or say you only want to show at most 12, or let's say uh, six, right, just for the sake of our demo here, we say we only ever want to show six posts so we'll come back refresh now we only have six posts but we have a bunch more cooking related posts uh, that we want to list out here so we need pagination so if we come to our query loop block on our category archive element right here is add pagination button so then you'll see drop in right here at the bottom is the pagination for the block query loop block so if we go back to our cooking category archive page now we can see we have multiple pages so we can click number two 
number one, and now we can sort through and navigate through more posts. All right, so that was it for creating a category archive page with Generate Press Premium and Generate Blocks. Uh, as you can see, there's a couple of those little tweaks there that you need to make sure to choose a loop template and inherit the query from the template in order for those category posts to be pulled in properly. And then always make sure to check your blog settings under settings reading to ensure it's showing the proper amount of posts you want it to show um, and always add pagination if necessary. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys soon.